your brother, your friend, your dietitian, back again for another installment in spirit, nutrition, books that changed my life, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Let's get it popping. Rich Dad, Poor Dad, the number one New York Times bestseller. It's one of the most read books, period, um, whether you're reading financial literacy or you're reading Fifty Shades of Grey. A lot of people are behind this book. Okay, I first came across Robert Kiyosaki when I was about 11, 12 years old. My dad introduced me to Rich Dad, Poor Dad for Teens, and it broke down a basic concept and explained the difference, the difference between um, an asset and a liability. But today, I'm going to talk about how this book changed my life and improved my understanding of um, financial uh, literacy, financial education, and help with my projection of where I'm going in the future uh, financially. Uh, a lot of people don't have time to read, don't have time to listen to audiobooks, or they ask me which books do I like to read or that I've read and that have been beneficial. So I started making this series. So I want to talk about the, what I've learned from this book. Basically, to give you the back, backbone and background of uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, it's based off of two different dads that Robert Kiyosaki had. No, they weren't homosexuals. Um, one is his real dad and the other one is his best friend's dad, but he worked as a father. Uh, he served as a father in a way um, because he would give him advice and bless him up with information and knowledge and wisdom. And so one dad was poor, he was highly educated with a PhD in education, and one dad was rich and he had an education, um, but it was a financial education. He owned lots of businesses. He understood the concept of wealth creation and wealth maintenance. Okay, and so the two different dads basically he had a, one had a philosophy of a job seeker, and one had the creative, uh, dynamic philosophy of a job creator. So the story goes through. Uh, Robert Kiyosaki coming up as a youth and learning from both dads and deciding which path he wanted to take. Did he want to take uh, the job uh, seeker uh, path or did he want to take the job creator path and the investor path? And eventually he takes the investor path. And that's what I want to talk about today. So one of the first concepts that he blasts through, one of the first myths that he blasts through that kind of... Uh, corroborated what I was thinking and kind of correlated with my mind state is, and my mindset is, um, the job security myth. He talks about how his dad lost his job when he was a um, high level manager, director of education in uh, Hawaii. He lost a high paying job and he went broke. Um, but people always teach us and tell us, get you a good government job, get you a secure, uh, you know, corporate job, climb up the ladder and you'll be safe. Really, my dad used to tell me, if you want security, you should buy life insurance, meaning there is no security out here, especially in the job um, market or in the job where you can be replaced by now AI or um, talent from India or from other countries. Um, or you could just be, um, when I say AI, I mean artificial intelligence, robots. Um, but you could just, there, there could be downsizing, merging of companies. Um, you know, recessions, things can happen and you could lose your job. So the job security really is a myth. That was one thing that kind of stuck out to me. I already knew that, but um, people kind of are fearful of losing their, their income. Um, and instead of investing and having more income come from different areas, they just stick in what's secure. And they just say yes to their boss, no boss, whatever the boss wants to hear, they brown nose to get the raise to maintain the income. But it's really nonsense. Another concept that he broke down was um, assets versus liabilities. Um, an asset, simply put, is something that puts money in your pocket. A liability is something that takes money out your pocket. So, for example, you're, you're a fly, you know, young professional. Um, you're fresh and responsible. You make 100 racks a year. Uh, you're a pharmacist. You're uh, working in Wall Street. Whatever, you know, whatever your position is. Um, one has one young uh, pharmacist, he has financial education, he has wisdom, right? So he understands the difference between assets and liabilities. So what does he do? He makes a decision to, instead of staying in a, staying in a nice uh, apartment, studio apartment, 
um, you know, in a high rise somewhere, um, staying still, appliances, nice looking, clean cut. He's intelligent financially. So he says, I'm going to buy a fourplex. Why am I going to buy a fourplex? Because I'm going to have three, uh, three tenants pay my mortgage for me. Not only am I going to do that, I'm going to have them um, pay me an, an income every month because two of the tenants are going to pay the mortgage and the last tenant is going to pay uh, me an actual surplus of income. It's going to be cash flowing. Um, whereas the next professional, they may work on Wall Street, they make the same amount of money as the pharmacist. But he says, you know what? I'm getting a nice apartment. I'm going to burn my money and I'm going to give me a new Jag or maybe not a Jag and give me a new uh, Volkswagen. But every month, the Volkswagen and the apartment are taking money out of this person's pocket. Whereas the other professional, the pharmacist, he's getting money placed in his pocket from those tenants that are renting out the other units in his fourplex. So this is the concept of assets versus liabilities. And he goes into this, um, you know, in depth in the book. And that's what I really like. Another concept that he touches on, which um, I kind of already knew about as well, um, is uh, net worth and defining net worth. And net worth basically is the value of everything that you have that's worth a dollar amount minus all of your debts. So, um, for example, you could have uh, my net worth is negative right now because I'm um, graduating from school with a lot of debts. Um, but say you had um, say you had fifteen thousand dollars in the bank, five thousand dollars in a mutual uh, fund that equates to twenty thousand. And say you had ten thousand dollars in student loans, right? And you didn't have any other debts, no credit card, no car, no house, nothing. You just had those things. If you subtract the ten thousand in debt from the twenty thousand, you now have a net worth of ten thousand. Um, wealth is not necessarily he claims defined as your net worth only. Net worth does play a role in what is what's your uh, what wealthy is defined as but net worth he defines is how long can you go without working um, and how long can you survive without working so some people may think how the hell do you survive without working <laughs> and that goes to the next uh, thing which is the rich don't work for money money works for the rich that was a concept that really kind of blew my mind um, and I had kind of been exposed to by my pops, but it didn't really make sense fully because I didn't have a more, I didn't have the wisdom and, ex, and exposure. But he used to say things like, um, you, you should work uh, on managing your business. You shouldn't be working at your business because then you have a job. Um, he used to say, if you work more than eight hours a week, you don't have a business, you have a job. He used to say things like that to me. And I was like, hmm, like really made me think. But, um, what the rich do is they invest their money into assets that produce dividends. So some assets are what? So what are some examples of assets, income generating assets? You have publishing rights, you have stocks, you have bonds, and you have real estate. With, oh, and businesses, of course. Um, the thing is, is that the ultra rich or the people who are already rich, they've been investing in sh owning shares, large amounts of shares of companies for decades, for generations. And so they're, they can live off the dividends. They can live off the dividends because they own so many shares. But somebody that's a small time investor or that's starting out and they're just investing 5000 a year um, in stocks. They're not going to produce enough. Their, their percentage, their return on investment, it's not going to be high enough for them to really live a wealthy lifestyle right here, right now in the flesh. By the time they uh, retire and they're 65 and there's no, um, there's no um, stock market crashes or anything like that, they'll have millions of dollars, but they'll be 65 years old. We want to enjoy life right now. We want to experience heaven now. So what do we do? You have to invest your income from your job into income producing assets, but you have to invest in two things, either businesses or real estate. Businesses and real estate can produce high enough returns on investment to where that you can live your life right now in abundance. 
You don't have to wait for uh, till you did or till you almost did and pass it down to your children. You can live right now in abundance. Why businesses? Businesses can produce massive amounts of income in real time. So like online businesses like Facebook, uh, Amazon. Um, I had an online business, capstonecaps.com. It's inactive, but I started it You know, years ago. I was trying out uh, the idea of online business and I sold products. I sold products all over the country. I had them in, I have the hats in different stores in, in different parts of the country. Um, people from Indiana, um, Mississippi, DC, Maryland, California, even people in Australia, Japan, UK were trying to buy the hats. So you can have an online business. There's no limitations out here. There's no limitations out here right now. Um, online businesses can produce a lot of income. A lot of these bloggers are making a lot of money because they're getting a lot of viewers coming to their website and they're selling ads. They're selling ad space and they're making a lot of money. Madame Noir, um, uh, what are some other websites? Uh, Urban Bush Girls, um, uh, Urban Bush Babes. Um, there's uh, Financial Juneteenth. Um, there's a lot of startup websites that are making a lot of money. Um, just Urban Intellectuals, Blavity.com. Um, there's so many different ones. Travel Noir is also another one, but it's they make more. They don't make money off advertisement. They make money dealing with their travel packages and things like that. They sell. But the point is, is that you can make money live and in the flesh, investing in businesses, investing in businesses and in real estate. Well, real estate is good because you have small money coming in that you need, but you get to have control of a whole asset. Um, and then you can use other people's money and creative finance and do different things like that. That's the gist of what I learned from Rich Dad Poor Dad. Um, the goal is to get enough income coming from your assets to cover your expenses. That's the definition of wealth. And that's the definition of financial freedom. For example, if you have an online business um, that sells hats like the one I had, right? It's very passive. It's very, very passive. Uh, I, I started it because of this idea I got from 4-Hour Workweek. 4-Hour Workweek is a book by Tim Ferriss. He talks about starting online businesses and um, only working four hours a week to manage them. I literally didn't have to do much work at all. I had someone else ship the hats. Someone else produce the hats. And all I did was manage the website and make sure the orders went out on time and collected money. I only made like between 100 and 300 dollars a month, but um, it was money that was basically passive. So, if your expenses are five thousand dollars for the month, if you can get money coming in from your hat business to get to six thousand dollars a month, guess what? If you're making six thousand dollars at your day job and your blog or your website or your business or uh, your real estate investments come up to six thousand dollars a month now guess what you could effectively quit your job or you can effectively retire or you can, you can keep working and just keep investing the money you're making from your job if you love it but you're wealthy now because you know that as long as I keep selling hats on this website passively as long as I keep uh, selling whatever product, as long as my real estate money keeps coming in passively, I know that I could quit my job and I could take care of my family because my expenses are $5,000 a month and they're covered every month because I'm making 6000 passively. So that's the definition of wealth. The only thing is, is that the wealthy, they make probably six more like 600000 a month. So their expenses may be... Uh, Five hundred thousand dollars a month, or they may be, um, I don't know, sixty thousand dollars a month, or they may be a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand. But every month they make they're making six hundred thousand dollars a month, right? Um, and that's that's wealth. That's the definition is to be able to live. How long are you able to live without working? That's the definition of wealth. Um, or as my mentor stated, pile passive income greater than living expenses. So if your passive income is greater than limit, your living expenses, then you're wealthy. Um, these are all the different things I learned from this book. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, cop this book, read it, memorize it, study it. 
It doesn't give you any how to's on building wealth. It just talks about the mind state, the mindset. Peace and blessings.